All right, I think it's up right now. actually working. Hang on. Yep, it's working. Alright. Uh, okay. Let me share this real quick. I think this, this connection down here is really bad. But let's see. the same with there over here though yeah they have a comment too oh okay yeah. but i thought it still pops up over here it's oh. down there yeah no, i saw oh, that part okay. but usually the stuff pops up over here mm -hmm. when somebody's actually in all right um let's see here Sorry guys, I'm just making this post real quick and then we'll get to see what you guys are talking about. Not really you, that's not what I want. Oliver, what's up? Ninja Brick Nine, Elliot, what's up, man? Uh, okay. We'll post this in the pins pack. second here guys hey Jack what's up um, okay I got two more things to post really quick here and then we'll this gives a chance for a few people to show up anyway uh, I hate this mouse trackpad thing. I never know how to work it. Uh, you sh we should bring down our mouse yeah. next time. Yeah. And I never know how to work this thing. One sec, I'm almost done, and then we will actually get into talking about stuff. I have to figure out how to do this kind of post too without. There we go. All right, it's all set up. Okay, watch out, because this is going to be us here on this thing yeah. on a delay, right? Yeah. Yeah, for a little bit. Yeah. Oh, now we're back to normal. 
Okay, so this is our third weekly live stream. Uh, again, if this is the first one you're catching, uh, we're doing these to kind of make up for the fact we don't do as many couch reviews as we used to. Uh, so we just kind of are doing this weekly thing where we talk about toy news or pickups or pop culture happenings, that kind of jazz. And we'll do it live on YouTube here at the channel. It's usually going to be Sunday around 8.30 p.m. Uh, can't always promise it's going to be that time, but so far that's about what time it's been, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, we saw Dark Phoenix today. We're going to talk about that. And the Marvel Legends Retro Wave X-Men figures, all those got shown. My dad said Popeye is the best superhero. Hey, that's that's awesome. Popeye is an awesome superhero. Uh, that Popeye Mezco figure is amazing. Yeah, that's great. We had one come in the shop the other day. We had day. two come oh, in the shop. Yeah. yeah. Um, that Mezco 112 Popeye is like the best Mezco 112 figure there is. Mm -hmm. Mike came to me and said, hey, um, do you get do you get any kind of discount on Mezco 112 stuff? And I said, well, I can order it to the comic shop and, you know, I'll get a comic mm -hmm. shop discount if there's, if there's a figure you really, really want. Um, it's like sick of his birthday or something like that. Right. Uh, and he said, oh, I'd like to get that Popeye. I'm like, dude, you're way too late on that yeah. Popeye. That Popeye has been out for a long time mm -hmm. now. Uh, you're not going to get that Popeye for like under $130 now. Mm -hmm. That's it's impossible. Yeah, you talked about that on the podcast, right? Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's right. Yeah, we talked about it on the show. Uh, so, Marvel Edge Retro Wave, Dark Phoenix movie, there was something else too. There was some kind of toy stuff. Oh, the San Diego sales happened. Yeah. And I didn't even try. And it felt good. Mm. I didn't even try for it. It was, uh, you know, the last year I got kind of hosed on the, I went ahead and worked on it all three days. I know we talked about this last time. Uh, just you watched your Mezco Dark Knight Returns review, and I uh, said, don't find the interviews you said you were doing on the variants. Did you end up doing the red dose? I don't know if I ever did them. I can't remember. I was going to do them, and then life sometimes gets in the way, and I don't go back and finish off the videos. I think I'm going to be able to finish off. Uh, I, so I don't I don't think I did. I don't know any series have actually like finished completely. Yeah, we've never finished them completely. Uh, my mom said Strawberry Shortcake is best. Hey, Strawberry Shortcake is awesome. That's cool. Uh, is this Jack, like... I don't know if that's him. Like, I don't think... It's my might cousin. be. Jack... Jackson Lakes? I don't it think could it, be. I don't, I don't know. I mean, Strawberry Shortcake seems like something Christina would say. I don't know. So, uh, yeah, I don't know if I've, I... don't think I ever did them. I can't, I, don't, I can't say for sure, but I don't think I did. Uh, I haven't really bought that many Mezco 112s past no. that. I've got Wolverine. I have Judge Dredd. That's the only one I have. I ended up not keeping the Ghostbusters set. I was like, I don't need this. I ordered it. I thought, you know, I'll decide when I get when it gets here. But I ended up letting it go. Mm -hmm. I don't need it. Okay, so what do you guys want to talk about first? The Marvel Legends X Men Retro Wave. I would think say Dark Phoenix. Yeah, will show up. Yeah. Definitely do that. Um, so the Marvel Legends Toy Biz or, or Toy Biz style yes. packaging oh, yeah, retro. It is him. Hey Jack. Uh, the Marvel Legends X Men Wave retro style. They've finally show, they finally showed the last two that were in the wave. They did it, what was it Friday? Yeah, it was Friday, Friday. showed those. Mm -hmm. um, and they showed them in the morning. By the way, I know you said you were taking suggestions on New World Psych reviews, and I'd love to see an Iron Spider review from you guys if you could. Are you talking about the Iron Spider comic one or the movie one? I have both of them. So uh, okay, so they showed all of them Friday morning. They showed the final two. They showed them all packaged, mm -hmm. which they hadn't shown them all packaged before. And then they said the pre-order would be up later that day for all the figures. Movie went, okay, yeah, man, for sure. Uh, I know there's a couple Marvel Legends ones I have set up. I just re got done recording the Marvel Legends Emma Frost one from the Build-A-Figure Puck Wave. I just finished recording it. I still got to do the pictures. But the next Marvel Select that I do will be the Iron Spider one. The movie version. Uh, okay, so they put them all up. And it was the first time we'd seen Storm and Iceman, which were rumored to be the final two spots. And... It ended up being those figures. Storm and Iceman were the final two. So the whole wave is um, Wolverine in the black outfit from like the Wolverine yeah. series. With the net thing. With the stocking mask thing going on. Um, Silver Samurai, Dazzler in her 80s outfit. Cyclops in his X Factor outfit. Um, Storm in her white outfit. And Iceman? Yeah. That's the whole wave? Mm -hmm. Am I missing somebody? Nope, no, I don't that's think all. so. That's six, right? It's, yeah, yeah. That's six. six. It's only okay. six. So let's break them down. No problem, Oliver. 
Uh, okay, so first of all, I think we should go with kind of the more weak ones first, moving up to the coolest ones, maybe. Probably. So, I would say... Dazzler? Dazzler. Dazzler. I, don't, I don't think Dazzler's that weak. Uh, I, we'll say Dazzler first, though. I think it's just because I like the 70s Dazzler better. Yeah. yeah. I'm not that interested. The only reason I like this one is the arcade game. Other than that, I have no attachment to this version Yeah, but she's so cool in that arcade game. Yeah, that's true. You know, it is, it is awesome to finally see that arcade game version, or the 80s version, as a figure. It'd be pretty... Even though... I'm, it's expensive, but it'd be pretty cool to get that NECA wall thing and have all the arcade ones walking like a side scroll. Uh, that would be kind of cool. Yeah. The NECA wall is kind of yeah. expensive, though. Yeah, and it'd be cool to have like all the video game characters walking like that, side scrollers. That would be neat. Uh, I'm really excited about the Dazzler. I really wanted the Dazzler as a kid because not only was she in that game, she was also in the X Men Pride of the X Men oh, cartoon. Yeah, she was in that. I forgot. Yeah. yeah. And they've never done a Dazzler figure in that outfit. And I really wanted her as a kid. Like, I wanted everybody from the Pride of the X-Men cartoon as figures. Um, Pride of the X-Men cartoon, for anybody that doesn't know, back in the 80s, uh, they were trying to get an X-Men series going, an X-Men cartoon series, and they produced this pilot called Pride of the X-Men. And it only was on, it was only, they only did the one half hour episode, and they put it into, like, the Marvel Action Hour, like, it would just show up. And I remember seeing it the first time as a kid and going, there's an X-Men cartoon? And, like, flipping out. Like, I was so excited, because I liked the X-Men comics mm -hmm. at that point. And I was just so excited. I'm like, oh my gosh, an X-Men cartoon. And then I went to watch it the next week, and it was, like, just the regular Marvel Action Hour stuff. And I'm like, what? What happened to the X-Men cartoon? Oh, yeah. Because when you're a kid, you don't know, and there's yeah, no internet. It gets canceled. Yeah, you don't, there's no internet, and they're, all it said in the TV Guide listings, I remember it was just Marvel Action Hour, so it's not like I could go in and look for X-Men. So I would see this, I saw this X-Men one time, and I'm like, what, what happened to X-Men? And I would watch it like every week. I had to, I had to put a tape in the VCR, hoping it would be on again. And I caught it another time, and I taped it. But it was it. That's all we got was this one pilot out of nowhere of X Men Pride of the X Men. Um, but I wanted everybody in that show as figures. And when Toy Biz started doing this stuff, we got a lot of those characters that were in that show. We never got Dazzler. Mm -hmm. um, and I really wanted that Dazzler. That was a good pilot too. It was. I liked it. Other than yeah. the Australian Wolverine, it's it really cool. The animation quality is amazing. Let me get caught up here. Yeah. Uh, did you guys play the Batman Arkham game? If so, what is your favorite one? I really like Batman Arkham Origins. No, I didn't. I haven't played any of them yet either. You have them. I just haven't had them. Yeah, I game. like Ar Arkham Origins. I like the first one, and I like Arkham Origins a lot. You haven't um, played Arkham Knight yet. I haven't played Arkham Knight, no. I would P Before I wasn't going to play it, because I think it was going to get PS4, and I got PS4. Uh, did you know Sonic Mania is free on the PS4 now, Keaton? Did you know that? No. Well, now you know. Uh, what movie should me and Blaze watch on Tuesday? Uh, I don't really know, man. I don't know. We watched a lot of the stuff we had. Yeah. I don't know. And hi to uh, Freight, Ch uh, Freight Shade. Um, okay. So, Dazzler. I think she's really cool. I think it's an awesome figure. I like that Bodie Ghostbusters is a great one to watch. Um, I love Ghostbusters. Uh, man, there's so many things I keep on thinking about talking about. And I'm, <laughs> I'm losing track. Yeah. So let me just jump. We'll go back to the Marvel Legends Retros. I want to say that the Ghostbusters um, remastered game, they're saying oh. that they're reworking the whole online thing. Yeah. Oh, oh they are. They're, they're awesome. rebuilding the yeah, whole online thing. So it's cool. going to be a totally new multiplayer online experience. I never that's awesome. Play, yeah. Yeah. I never got to play I never got, I never got to play I one I don't think I ever played it either. I played one match, but with one, and only one guy yeah, was on my thing. Was I'm, I'm more so. excited because I like the PS4 online better than I like the Xbox online. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so that's, that's super exciting that they're going to redo that. The whole thing's getting remastered. They haven't said the date yet. I think that they said that the... The game will be up, and then the online will be an update to the game. So okay. it, won't, it won't be with the game at launch, but it'll be a free update. I'm guessing October. That's my guess. For I don't know. I mean, I'm going to guess the game is soon. Mm. And I'm going to guess the online's not going to be until later on. Uh, as far as Ghostbusters, the new Blu-ray set comes out. Blu-ray and 4K set comes out Tuesday. So excited. And some that. people have already got theirs. Oh, okay. Yeah, I've seen that. They're saying like, the deleted scenes are amazing, and the... Um, the unfinished trailer thing with the cart with the commercial from mm -hmm. Ghostbusters Two is incredible. Like it's a, a two minutes of just like just complete joy. Watching this is like wow. It's like this newly unearthed Ghostbusters thing you thought you'd never see. Is that the promo that they use as? Um... It's the little bits they use as the commercial mm -hmm. yeah. in there, but it's like the full thing that was going to be the teaser trailer. Isn't there going to be a new Batman Arkham game? I heard that it's in development. I I don't know. I hadn't heard that. Yeah, they were uh, talking about it, but. They didn't show anything at E3, so mm. I'm not sure. So that's that's exciting news for Ghostbusters. Ghostbusters Fan Fest just happened this past weekend, and not a lot came out of it. Did anything for uh, cleaning up the town happen? Uh, I think maybe they showed the trailer. I don't know, though. Okay. I didn't hear anything. Uh, the only thing I did hear was 
But this didn't come out of FanFest. Was Sigourney Weaver did an interview and she said, I'm coming back as Dana Barrett. I can't wait to work with the guys again. So everybody's assuming the guys again means the cast. And then one of the Ghostbusters groups that was at a Jason Reitman panel posted, Bill Murray, Dan Aykroyd, and Ernie Hudson are signed on for the movie. I can't wait. But the more that's come out of it, it sounds like at the panel all that Jason Reitman said was that they'd read the script. Okay, so it's that's, taken out of context. Yeah, that's not saying they're in the movie. They just read the script. Yeah. That's two totally different things. But mm -hmm. if they're reading the script, there is a chance. I would assume that means they have parts. Plus, with uh, Sigourney Weaver's thing that she said. That she said, yeah. there's a. I would say that they're they're in the script, but maybe not that they're signed on yet. There's always been rumors about a new game developed, but it's really unlikely it will get out to the ground at this point. It said that they were closing it. What were the Arkham VR? Oh, okay, so the Arkham VR game. Uh, what's up, fellas? Hello from Hades, aka South Texas. What's up, one god tank? What's happening, dude? Uh, did you watch Dark Phoenix? What did you think about it? I heard it flopped. We did watch Dark Phoenix, and it's one of the things we're going to talk about tonight. I was going to wait until a few more people showed up before we jumped into that. Um, so we'll, we'll finish up this Marvel Legends Retro talk, and then we'll talk about Dark Phoenix. Okay, so Dazzler, I think, is awesome. I like that she has the attachments. Yep. So yeah. The sparkly attachment things. Um, Silver Samurai, I think, is He's killer. He's my favorite. Awesome. He's my favorite of the way. So cool. By far, like, that's the one I'm most excited He's about. got the two swords and, and yeah. the scabbards, you know, or the sheaths to put them in. That's awesome. Um, he looks really sharp. I kind of wish he had some back metalizing going on, but, because the old Toy Biz figure had back metalizing, mm -hmm. but I'm okay with it, because yeah. some of those that can interfere with the articulation and all that stuff. Um, so, uh, Silver Samurai is awesome. I think that, I like Wolverine a lot. One of the things I was surprised to see, though, is that, you know, the first Wolverine they did for the Juggernaut Wave, the first of the newer, shorter yeah. Wolverines, it came with the two different hands. So there were the hands with the claws, mm -hmm. and there were the hands without the claws. Then, when they did the Tiger Strike one, he only had the hands with the claws. Did he? I'm almost positive no. that he only had the one set of hands, right? In the new one? Yeah. I thought, I thought no, he, he has the unclawed yeah. ones, too. Does he? I thought he only had the one. Oh, I'm thinking the retro one. Yeah. I... So the retro one only has the one set of hands with claws, though, and the claws pop out. Oh, right? Going on that, Steve, uh, about the, he doesn't like the X-Men costumes. They were blue and yellow in this movie for part of it. You can see in the trailers that... Oh, yeah, they, they were totally. Yeah. They were the and, new X-Men costumes. Yeah, and in first class, they're blue and yellow, so they are... They've gone brighter. It's the first three movies, and that was early 2000s when comic book movies weren't really tested, so... Yeah, um... Uh, yeah, I, I think that the costumes they did in this movie, and they're trying to do, co I think, costumes from kind of each time period they jump forward through. Um, we're going to be talking about Dark Phoenix here. I want to finish up these okay, yeah, Let's get back to that. Um, we can only scroll up and catch up on some of this stuff. Okay, uh, so uh, I won't forget about talking to Comic Theater. Uh, so, the, what's the third one? So, the, yeah, the, the retro Wolverine, I think, only had the one set then. I think he only had one set of hands. Okay. Uh, Most positive. Yeah, yeah, he did only have one set of I thought the blue hands. one only had one set of hands, too, but I could be wrong. I, could I be have wrong. the blue one. Does it have two sets of hands? Yeah, it has two sets of hands. Are you absolutely sure? The Marvel Legend, yeah. Okay. Yeah, it has two sets of hands. So the retro one only has one set of hands, though. Yeah. And so I thought this one retro one only had one set of hands, and he's got two sets of hands, but he's only got one head. I would have much rather him had a second head that didn't have the stocking on and not the extra set of hands, because yeah. you can just pull the... The, um, claws the claws out. out. You know, that makes it just... Yeah. You should just pull the claws out, and then you can have that, and you actually have the extra head. So I was a little disappointed by him not having the extra head. Um, I thought that Cyclops looks really cool. I like that. Oh, yeah. I really like it, but he needs the extra head where no Where it doesn't have the crackly energy coming off. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Both the heads have that crackly energy coming off. Um, I just looked at my blue Wolverine, and yeah, he has two sets of hands. Okay, cool. Thanks, Wyatt. Um, I don't know why I kept thinking he's only got one set. Maybe because mine... I got a loose one, maybe. And maybe it only had one him? set of hands. Okay. That's probably what it is. Uh, so, um, so he's only got the, so he's got the two sets of hands. I wish he had the extra head instead of the one without the stocking. When I first saw the stocking one, I thought, oh, for sure they're going to include an extra head. Mm -hmm. But he's only got the one head with the stocking mask. And the stocking looks darker. It is a lot darker in that new picture. Uh, I guess you can just switch on an unmasked Wolverine head yeah. from the yeah, motorcycle or something. A them. There's a few of them floating around. Yeah. So you can easily switch something else onto there. Um, I'm going to catch up on some questions here real quick. Uh, okay. There's a lot back here. Um, Secret Life of Pets 2 is better. Bobby, uh, my wife actually took my daughter to see Secret Life of Pets 2 while we saw Dark Phoenix. Uh, I think the storm looks amazing in this new wave. Yeah, we're going to get to her. Yeah. Um, what comics are you looking forward to this week? Uh, Major X comes in this week, and I'm actually really excited about it. Uh, Dark Phoenix is X-Men. 
Bill Samer on Silver Samurai sculpt looks killer, but lack of paint or silver makes him look like a flat gray plastic. Exactly. So I wish he was either more silver or had the back metalizing. Um, let's see. I always get confused by the X-Men timeline. Do you guys get it? I don't really do, to be honest. I'm, I'm actually pretty with it now. Um, there should have been a button that, that ejects his claws out. That's like the old uh, Toy Biz one. Um, no JCC, you didn't miss it. Uh, Jack saw Godzilla and really did not enjoy it. Okay, so that's all caught up on that. Um, so, Cyclops. I love the plug-in visor effect. Yeah, but... I think that's really cool. Yeah. But one of the heads should not have the crackle energy. You could have the crackle energy on the one with the inserted visor piece. Yeah, but the other one. But the other one should have no crackle energy. I'm really surprised to see that. And I'm kind of curious if... Um, that's going to be moving forward that they're going to do this crackle energy thing on a lot of the Cyclopses. I hope they don't. I like them more than I hope they, I hope they do, but then you just have another head that doesn't have Yeah. yeah. I, I hope that as well, because I would like to switch out just a normal head. Or like just him. do, like, switch out visors. I feel like that wouldn't be that bad to plug yeah, in. Yeah, I, I don't think it would be that bad either. I think it, it might get a little bit... Easier for the head, probably. Yeah. It might, maybe maybe it would look a little too bulky. I don't know. Yeah, maybe. Um, let's see. Brody's perspective is leaving. See you, Brody. Bye. Uh, okay, so that's Cyclops, and then we've got Storm and Iceman I want to save to the end. Is that everybody but Storm and Iceman, though? Um, yes. So we sent we Dazzler. Did we did Wolverine. Dazzler. Silver yeah. Samurai. Cyclops. Cyclops. There's okay, four, so, so the yeah. new two new reveals are Storm and Iceman. Storm is in her white outfit from, like, the 90s cartoon. She's got this, like, cape piece. Um, the, yeah, the new yeah, the energy effect is very similar on that. On that uh, Cyclops, Oliver says the energy effect is very similar to Mezco is doing with the new Cyclops. Totally agree. Mm -hmm. It is real. I think it's really cool that it's included. I love the visor piece. I think it's really awesome. I just wish there was a non-crackling energy head. Um, then there's uh, so there's Storm and she's got the she's got a little bit of a lightning effect that she comes with, like little pieces. Mm -hmm. Yeah, two little. Two yeah, pieces. and the cake pieces. I think she looks just awesome. She's, yeah, she's great. I, I like her and Silver Samurai the best out of that wave. I think the Iceman's my favorite of the wave just because I love Iceman so much. Mm -hmm. I like Cyclops because I'm reading X Factor right now. So. I, I love that X Factor suit on Cyclops. But I still, the head. The whole wave is awesome. Yeah, the, I think the whole great. wave is awesome. I think the X Men waves are best overall for character choices. Definitely. I think yeah. they always have. They're it might best. be because I like X Men characters the best. But yeah, me well, too. I was talking to a guy at this about the toy department. Uh, Tony was talking about this where he was talking about the first wave of retro Marvel was really great. It hit like all the cool characters. The second wave of retro Marvel, eh, not so great. And now we're back to a really great wave of retro Marvel. So I wonder if it's going to follow this pattern. And the next wave is going to be not so great. And I also wonder if they're going to continue on with the Marvel superheroes, or if now they're done with those and they're just going to do just X Men retro. X Men be... seems to sell. Like it's always hard to find. Yeah, the X Men waves just are going yeah. super fast. Uh, and this whole wave, I think, is selling. I think every figure is going to sell. Mm -hmm. They went up, and Storm immediately sold out at, like, most retailers. He I think Hasbro Pulse is still the only figure that's sold out, is, is Storm. Everybody's waiting for that Storm. Uh, I think that Iceman is going to be maybe the second most popular in the way, but because the we hadn't... the slide's cool, too. Yeah, the ice slide's really cool. Um, but he doesn't have open hands with... Yeah, I know. He that's doesn't. What I that's kind of weird. That. He should have open hands. I'm wondering if, you, if the, the coloring will match the other Iceman they did, so you can switch on his open hands. Yeah, I have that one. Yeah, I, I, I don't know if you'll be able to switch them out or not. Um, so, hopefully that works. Uh, I do like his little ice stand. I think that's really neat yeah. that he yeah. comes with. And I like these got the inhibitor belt. Um, they still need to make original Iceman. They do, like the snowy the Iceman. Snow that would yeah. be really cool. Yeah, because the all-new X-Men box set one... Is it's still all like, like the an original icy, suits. Yeah. Except for him. He's just yeah. all ice. Uh, I wish he was snowy with the boots on. Um, let's see. The new energy you've had in Cloth Goods on Hands from Marvel Legends is blowing my mind. Me too. I love Cloth Goods. I love them. I, I got a guy customized a gambit for me because I wanted a gambit with a cloth uh, cloak. And I, you know, I do some customizing too, but I, sometimes I'm just like, you know what? It's not worth the effort. I'm just going to get somebody else to do it and I'll just pay him for it. Um, so I got a customized gambit with a cloth coat and like the non-coated arms. So he's actually like going to be poseable and movable. Yeah. Cause gambit should be a character that should be able to pose around a lot. Mm -hmm. And the coat is a little restrictive. I really like cloth goods. Um, you can do a lot with a plastic cape. You can do a lot of cool sculpted stuff with it. But as far as posability on the figure, cloth is the way to go. Um, I also really want to talk about that card back. The card backs are so... Awesome. Yeah, they're way cool. Oh, definitely. It takes me right back to being a kid. Yeah, I know you guys didn't grow up right. on that line. I, didn't, I grew up on that line. But it takes me right back to being a kid and going through those pegs. Hey, what's up, Jaren? Um, 
going right back through those pegs and looking through them, trying to find the characters like Iceman and Deadpool, especially the Iceman. Like when I was a kid, seeing Iceman on the card back, you, you couldn't find him anywhere. I looked everywhere for Iceman, and then I found him at like a Walgreens, and I was just, I got the Iceman. And I remember reading like Hero Illustrated or some one of those magazines because again there was no internet back then, and then talking about how the Iceman had been recalled because the the color change feature not working or the freezer coloring thing not working on him and him cracking apart or something like that. I can't remember exactly what it said, but he had been recalled, and so I was like, oh, I got the Iceman before he got pulled, and then they ended up sending back to stores in like this blue plastic instead of the mm -hmm. solid clear plastic. So especially that Iceman takes me right back to looking for that figure. Um, so for those, I'm probably going to do a set of card and, and a set of loose uh, because they're just, they're so cool looking. It'd be cool yeah. if they did a Secret Wars wave with Secret mm -hmm. Wars card backs. Yeah, that would be really cool. Yeah. That would be really awesome. Yeah. I would like that a lot. Uh, okay, so I think that's everything about the uh, Marvel Legends Retro Wave. Yeah, I think so, yeah. so. All right, so we saw Dark Phoenix today. Now, a lot of people has been dogging Dark Phoenix. They've been saying that Dark Phoenix looks terrible, it looks awful, the trailers are terrible, uh, this movie's going to be awful, uh, the reviews that are coming out, they say it's the worst, it's terrible, and there's a down that there's so many reviews that are going in and going, X-Men continues the downward spiral, these X-Men and Fox movies are terrible, they're awful, they're so bad. Hey, Stop Motion Studios. Uh, they're so, so bad. Nobody, nobody wants to see these films. And I, I've been sitting there going as, as I'm getting, seeing all these reviews and everything and all these people talking about it, I'm like, I don't get it. I really don't get the hatred for the, the Fox X-Men movies. Just because you like the Marvel Cinematic Universe doesn't mean you have to hate yeah, you can the like X-Men movies. Than one you can movie. like more than one thing. Yeah. It's okay. You're allowed to like DC and Marvel. You're allowed to like the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And you're allowed to like the Fox Universe. It's okay. You can like both things. You don't have to dog the one thing to make the other thing seem better. And that's what it feels like a lot of times. They get the vibe. Because especially when they follow it up with, thank goodness Marvel's taking it over. And, oh, Kevin Feige, save us from Fox. And all these things. And I'm like, you know what? If you really go back and look, there's not that many of those X-Men movies that were that bad there's, for you to, like, yeah, dog. There's, like, three of them that people don't like. Yeah, okay. So we're gonna let's just break them down. X-Men, the original, was pioneering. Yeah, and it's pretty good still. Like, it's still it, pretty good. Some stuff doesn't hold up. A lot of it does. It, yeah, I mean, and it's it came at a time when comic movies were done. I mean, at that point, Batman had been driven into the ground. Superman had been driven into the ground. We Even had movies played. like Steel. We had movies like um, uh, Meteor Man or something. And all these movies that were just like cheat. What's up, JLCR Productions? Uh, so you had all these movies at that time that were comic book movies, but it was just schlock. It was awful. It was terrible. Um, then you got Blade. Then you got Blade. Was serious. You got Blade, which was serious, but nobody really thought of that as a comic book movie. Only the people that read comics, like hardcore, knew that Blade was a comic character. To most people, it was just a Wesley Snipes vampire movie. Mm -hmm. It wasn't a comic book movie. It was a Wesley Snipes vampire movie. Um, so X Men comes along, and it's you know it's not the most mainstream of superheroes. You had the X-Men cartoon that gave it a lot of exposure, but it's not like a Spider-Man, a Superman, or a Batman. At that point, X-Men was X-Men. Although, coming off the 90s, X-Men titles were pretty big, weren't they? Like They were pretty big, yeah, but I mean, I'm not on the same level as public awareness okay. as a Superman, a Batman, or a Spider-Man. Um, yeah, people tend to focus on the, the uh, I don't know, you may have mistyped, the bad stuff like Origins and stuff instead of admiring how groundbreaking some of them were in a time when it was a huge risk to drop a hero super movie. Totally right, Oliver. That's exactly what I'm saying. You know, that's 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 my take on it too. Was that that first X Men was it changed everything? It put it in, uh, the X Men name and comics in the mainstream media. Um, that just and it blew everybody away. It was unlike anything anybody ever had seen. Yeah, they weren't wearing the comic costumes, but they had comic book. Um, powers, they had comic book origins, they were comic book characters coming to life. So it was it was something that people hadn't seen before. And as far as casting goes, the casting on those movies is awesome. Yeah, they're great. You can't tell me that there's going to be somebody that's going to jump in and do Wolverine as good as Hugh Jackman when Marvel takes it over. I'm sorry. Yeah, you're, you're not, not going to do him better, you're not going to do better than Fastbender as Magneto. Or Professor X, yeah. or Mike, uh, Patrick Stewart, or... I think James McAvoy does a really yeah, good job, too, but, too but as far as, like, a comic-accurate Professor X, 
It's gonna be really hard to top Patrick yeah. Stewart. It's MC, really gonna be tough. MCU didn't beat Quicksilver. They're no, they didn't. Over. Exactly. They're exactly. So if you want to compare between what the MCU does with the character, look how MCU dealt with Quicksilver in Age of Ultron. He was not good he was at all. A throwaway character. He was totally yeah, good. And Fox turned him into the star. Like even these little segments he was in, he was so awesome. So you know, you look at that first X Men. I think it still it still holds up for what it is. It's not the greatest character uh, uh, comic book movie of all time. It's definitely not the worst, though. And it's a great opening act to what became the X-Men universe. I'm going to catch some of these comments real quick. Um, Days of Future Past was a great X-Men movie. Yep. We're going to get to that one. It is awesome. Uh, Wyatt says, I haven't seen Dark Phoenix yet, but I really enjoyed First Class, Days of Future Past, and Apocalypse. However, I'm not a fan of how they keep watering down Mystique's blue skin. Yeah, that's... I think that has a lot to do with the actress. I don't think like Jennifer... Yeah, Jennifer Lawrence does not yeah. like the makeup process. So I think they're pulling back as much as they can so she doesn't have to wear the makeup as much. that's why you see a lot of human... Mystique. Yeah, that's a lot of other, a lot of reason you need to see. And remember, we're not going to stand into any kind of spoilers. Yeah, too. no spoilers. Yeah. Too. Um, also, I like the X Men Origins Wolverine game. Oh, that game is awesome. Yeah, is they released back in 2009 on the PS3. You're totally right. That game is killer. When the time eventually comes, who do you think will replace Hugh Jackman? That's going to be really tough. Um, I like to see Gracie reviewing <laughs> some cat vids. Or reviewing some cat vids is what Christina's saying. Yeah, that'd be great. Uh, yeah. Well, you know what? Correct before you type there. That's my sister. Um, okay. So, uh, so they get X Men Two, and that it's takes so, it to the next it's level. It's so good. Like X Men Two is one really of the best good. Comic book movies, I yeah. think. It's really good. Anybody that's criticizing those Fox films, I don't understand how you could watch X Men Two and not enjoy it as a comic book movie. It gets into Wolverine's origin. Yeah. Wolverine cuts loose in the yeah, mansion. That whole scene with him in the mansion is. Oh, it's it's great. Cool. Lady Death Strikes scenes. cool. Um, Striker's, Striker's cool. cool, and it's pulling off of the God Loves Man Kills storyline from comics, mm -hmm. so a lot of times these movies just make up their own thing, like Spider-Man Homecoming has nothing to do with any comic Anything, book series yeah. I've ever seen. There's not a, a comic book storyline really in there. You may be playing into Iron Spider and Civil War, but not really, so that's just totally made up. So all these people that say, ah, they don't do anything from the comics. Um, no, they do, and they do it a lot more than some of the other film franchises do. God Loves Man Kills is a big inspiration for X-Men 2. Um, I think Tom Hardy is the build and height to pull off Wolverine. There were some rumors of him. Um, I did get my cable, dude. Thank you. Uh, so uh, there was there was talks about Tom Hardy playing Wolverine at some point. The guy that was doing the the uh, X Men First Class was it Matt Vaughn that wrote X Men First Class and was writing parts of Days of Future Past. He originally envisioned a trilogy that was First Class and then a seventies movie with a different Wolverine, a younger Wolverine. And the Days of Future Past being the third movie, crossing them over together. I highly recommend the Spider-Man game for PS4. Yeah, we've got oh, the Spider-Man yeah, game for PS4. That game. They it's played one of my favorite games. Yeah. I've never my played it. I played it. Well, I played the first level. It was awesome though. Uh, so then we get what X Men Three is next, yeah, and that's one of the ones people don't. Like. And that's a bad one. Yeah, it's a bad one. That's a bad one. But that was like 2006. It was a different director. Um, there was problems on set because you lost. Yep. The guy that plays Cyclops, you lost Brian Singer. Yeah, yeah, Brian Singer was out. He was a big driving force of those first two movies. You lost uh, James Warzer wasn't really excited about coming back for it. Um, he had a different direction going with the films. Uh, so that one is a misstep. I, I'm, there are parts about X-Men The Last Stand that I can look at and kind of enjoy. One of the big things is Hugh Jackman is still great as Wolverine. Yeah. There's no taking away, anything away from that. Um, but Juggernaut's awful. Juggernaut's awful. awful. There's a lot of that film that's bad. It's really bad. But... You could say the same thing about Iron Man three. Yeah, you can. You can definitely Terrible. say the same. Tony thing Stark about may be great as Iron Man, but the movie's bad. Malekith, Iron Man two is not that yeah, great. Malekith isn't good in Thor. And the Thor Dark of the Dark World. World's not that good. You know, so there's other franchises that hit a bad mark. You know, you get to a movie and it's not so great. So you don't judge every movie and the entire franchise based on a couple of bad ones. Um, so we got X Men three. That's not very good. X Men Origin Wolverine falls that up. That's not very good. Um, yeah, all of us have glasses now. <laughs> Uh, so we'll get to this. Hang on. Let's. Uh, I never really checked out the Fox films. Don't include Devil movies and Origins Wolverine twice. Um, oh, I'm I'm way behind. Uh, I'm curious since I only read Batman and not X Men in the comics. Is Wolverine's real name Jimmy like an X Men Origins Wolverine? His name is James Hallett. Yeah. It, 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 yeah, it's reveal, revealed in the uh, Origin Wolverine comic that his name is James Hallett. Um, he t he kind of adopts the name Logan. Uh, I've never really checked out the Fox and X-Men stuff that's like Deadpool movies and X-Men Origins Wolverine twice. I highly recommend X-Men 2 X -Men Days and X-Men Days of Future, Future Past. But you kind of need to watch X-Men First Class, though, before you watch X-Men Days of Future Past. First Class is great, too. And Logan. Logan's, uh, Logan's really great. Really, really, really the great. trailer for Dark Phoenix is giving, away, giving you some Last Stand vibes, especially the Jean Grey in the neighborhood using your power scene. Uh, it's better than X-Men Last Stand, for sure. Way better. Um, how do you think they should introduce the X-Men into you if they do go there out? Not for quite a while. 
Um, oh my god, kids with glasses. Oh my god, I'm leaving. Bye. <laughs> okay, see you, Vincent. Uh, so, um, I guess he hates kids with glasses or something like that. Uh, <laughs> later, dude. Um, so, uh, then we get an X-Men Origins Wolverine. Not that great. Uh, but still, that's too bad. 2006, yeah. 2009, those are bad. And then we go to X-Men uh, First Class, which I thought was great. Really, really good. Really I thought it was good. a great way to kind of restart the franchise. Yeah, put new life into it. Put new life into it, new actors, but, but still not erasing the things that happened before. That's, that's saying that's the future, this is the past. Um, and that's proving that uh, Hugh Jackman as Wolverine isn't the only good thing about the mo that those movies because he's not in that one for except for that one scene and it's still a great movie yeah uh, it's totally you don't need Hugh Jackman's Wolverine no he's great you don't need him to make a good X-Men movie and that's proven in X-Men First Class um, it's really solid it's a, it was a great, like, great way to start the franchise again my wife who doesn't really care about comic book movies that much she loved X-Men First Class yeah she's um, in her top three yes yeah she really enjoyed X-Men First Class and it got me interested in X-Men movies again um, after the two missteps in a row X-Men First Class really set things right. Uh, I thought the Rainbow Last Blood trailer was really cool. Yeah, I thought it was good, too. It's like Rambo Home Alone, and I'm totally down for Rambo Home Alone. Uh, so, then we get to... What else after that? The Wolverine? Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's, yeah, next is the Wolverine. And I, you know, when I first tried to watch the Wolverine, I was like, this is kind of slow, and I didn't watch it. And then I went back and watched it later on. I'm like, you know what? This is really good. There are some slow parts to it, but it's a... I, Hugh Jackman's great as Wolverine. It's a story taken from the comics with him in Japan, Mariko, Yukio, all that stuff. Silver Samurai. Although the robotic Silver Samurai at the end is, is not good. Yeah, they should not, not have done it. And it was kind of responding to what was currently going on with the MCU with like Iron Man and Iron Giant robot characters and stuff. It might, it might have been since I tried to watch them on a 10 o'clock at night, but I also thought it was kind of slow my first time watching it. There were some slow parts to it, but I, I thoroughly enjoy it, and I go back to it now more often because of its connections to the comics. And again, people say, these are not the comics. You're not paying enough attention because there's a lot of stuff in the comics or in these movies. Comics. Yeah. You haven't read um, comics. Yeah. Let's see, what do you guys think of the Rainbow? We saw that. Well, I don't think it was necessarily the Weapon X scene in Apocalypse was really cool. I love yeah, the Weapon X scene great scene. in yeah, Apocalypse. Awesome. And that's, again, something for the comic fans that they throw in these movies where it's like, let's put him in the Weapon X outfit. Like, straight up, that's the Weapon X suit from the Marvel Comics Presents Weapon X series. It's, they don't have to make it look like that. It doesn't even make sense yeah. in the movie for it to look like that, but they did it. Um, okay, I love the X-Men Legends games back in the PS2. Those games are remastered for the X-Men Legends 2. They should re-add online gameplay. I haven't played those. Mm -hmm. Those are the ones that are like the, um, the precursors to what? Ultimate Alliance. Ultimate or? Alliance, maybe? Well, it's Ultimate Alliance. Um, also, I think people overlook how solid pretty much every X-Men casting has been. Yes. Yeah, Everyone focuses on Jackman. Really They're consistently pretty great. Ryan Reynolds is great. Patrick Stewart, James McAvoy. I totally agree. What's up, Teacher, teacher Seductive Steve? That's an interesting name. Um, <laughs> hey, again, JLCR. Uh, your shirt is who you are, who wins in a fight. Your shirt is who you are, who wins in a fight. Oh, between the three of us? <laughs> you got Pokemon. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I won. I got the entire X Men team. Yeah, but well, I see Magneto uh, on here. Yeah, but um, we got mental people on here. Okay, we got Wolverine if on Rogue's here. In the fight, then she Magneto's on man. here. Rogue, yeah, I mean, this is the entire X Men team. I didn't even get all She drains the powers. My team yeah. wins. I got Pikachu. You got Pikachu. Uh, Pokemon wins. Pikachu takes out everybody. It's four Pikachu. Uh, yeah, we are discussing Dark Phoenix, but I'm not doing. We're not yeah, doing no any spoilers. spoilers. We're not doing any spoilers. Uh, Keith wins for sure. Uh, okay, so then we move on to, um, we go to X-Men Days of Future Past. The best X-Men movie. Again, they're, they are adapting the Days of Future Past comic storyline into a film. And you can't complain about the way they adapt things if you then look at the Marvel movies and the way they adapt things. Yeah, like Civil War is not... Civil War is not Civil War yeah, from the comics. It's not. Infinity War is not the Infinity Gauntlet from the comics. Um, you've got Demon in a Bottle for Iron Man is not what it is yeah. from the comics. The character of Whiplash is not Whiplash like from the Dynamo, comics. It's like, mashing yeah. those two together. Obadiah Stain is not Obadiah Stain from the comics. Um, you've got Thor Ragnarok, which throws in yeah. Planet Hulk out of nowhere. It has, it's, I love Thor Ragnarok, but it has nothing to do with any comics. It's just Planet Hulk wedged into a weird Thor Guardians of the Galaxy mishmash. And again, I like the movie. But I hate when people say the X-Men Fox films have nothing to do with comics, and they praise the MCU films. They're not dead on the comics. They're not. 
They're done for a film audience. That's just how it is. They're adapting these things. So that's they're, they're not always going to be perfect. But I really enjoy Days of Future Past, and I think it's a good correlation of what the comics were, with the Sentinels in the future and them sending a character back mentally to what they were in the past. Yeah, um, it's, it's not Kitty. It's, it's, yeah, it's not Kitty. It's going to be Wolverine, because Wolverine's the big star yeah. in these films, and he makes the most sense because he would have been in the 70s. Mm-hmm. And, and his yeah. would have been the same, as opposed to Kitty was exactly not in the, the 70s. Um, so, yeah, and that correlates into them doing decade by decade. Um, and it's kind of, I think it's kind of neat. The more I think about it, sometimes I go, all oh, these characters look exactly the same throughout all these decades. Well, they did in the comics, too. Yeah. So if you read a comic from the 60s, Professor X looks the same so the, as if you read a comic in the 90s. Memory. He looks the same. So if you take it as a, a comic book perspective and go, these characters in the comics throughout the decades... They didn't address them aging. They stayed the same throughout these decades. And if you take that mentality going into these movies, I'm okay with them looking the same throughout all these decades. They kind of age in a little, like their hair. Yeah, stuff. their hair. Yeah, and, and they do age as actors. Um, Sentinel fights were awesome. Definitely need more of those. Especially yeah. the opening of Days of Future those Past. Were great. I thought Days of Future Past, both the regular version and the theatrical cut, is an amazing comic book film. And the more I think about it, the more it's probably in my top five comic book movies. I love. Days of Future Past. It's, it's awesome. It's, it's so, so really good. Much fun to watch it, um, and all the cast is great. The action's great. The way they tied the previous cast of the X Men films into the other films and had them being the the future versions, and then they had the the past versions. It was just so well done. And there's no other of these comic book movies that can do that because they haven't done two versions of their their casts, or they could put them together again. And make it work, you know, an old version and a new version. Um, random question: Is the Dark Knight Returns still your favorite graphic novel? Oh, yes, it definitely is. Totally is. Mm. Um, uh, okay, so we're all caught up with that. So we had Days of Future Past, and then after that is Deadpool. Deadpool? Is it? Is it? Maybe I don't. I, see, I, I kind of keep the Deadpool one straight. I thought Deadpool was great. I didn't watch Deadpool. And it's because it's rated R. Um, yeah. Well. So it's it's very racy, and some of the jokes I don't think need to be as bad as they are because it's like, well, we're doing a rated R, we're gonna go full on. There's a lot of Deadpool comics that don't go full R rating. You know, you could have done a, I think you could have done a PG-13 Deadpool, and it would have been just as funny and just as good. But I still really like Deadpool. I, I enjoyed Deadpool. My wife really liked Deadpool. Um, and again, Ryan Reynolds is Deadpool. You're not gonna get better than that. They're not going to top that. Yeah, no, that, at Marvel I feel like that's, that's one they'll keep too. That's, that's one yeah. they'll, they'll keep. They're not going to top that. So, uh, Michael Fassbender is Magneto. Might be my favorite casting choice for the newer X Men movies. He is awesome. Yeah, he's great. He is that scene in the bar in oh awesome. first class. That scene so in the bar good. in first class. I think we did a podcast, Mike. Yeah, and I. it was. Yeah. Yeah, where we talked about like our favorite comic book film moments or something yeah. like that. No, it was favorite film moments. Favorite in film moments yeah. in general. Yeah, your number five. Yeah, the the Magneto bar scene from First Class made it on there. I I was on the edge of my seat during that scene. It's comparable to the Michael Keaton scene in Spider Man Homecoming. Episode eight. Um, episode eight of Back to the Future. I know because I just listened to it. Uh, I think it's comparable to that scene as much as I love the Michael Keaton Vulture in the car scene of Homecoming. It's really the only scene I really love about that yeah. movie. Um, whereas that bar scenes that are already a great movie. It's just stuck in the middle yeah. of a great movie. Um, let's see. Uh, can you at least tell me that Dark Phoenix is better than the Bright Rider experiments? Uh, of course, yes. Yeah. Dark Phoenix is a, a, way better than The Last Stand. I like um, it better than Apocalypse uh, Origins. Yeah. Yeah. I might have liked it better than The Wolverine. I don't know. I haven't I've seen The Wolverine. Either I, of them. I liked up. Dark Phoenix better than. X Men Apocalypse. Yeah. I liked yeah. it better than X Men Three. I liked it better than X Men Origins Wolverine. I think I might have liked it better than the Wolverine. I think but I did. I'd really have to kind of watch it a couple more times first before I knew for sure. Um, and throwing in some MCU films in here, I liked it better than Iron Man Two. I liked it better than Iron Man Three. I liked it better than Thor: The Dark World. Mm-hmm. I liked it better than Avengers: Age of Ultron. I liked it better than Homecoming. I liked it better than Spider Man oh, Homecoming. Definitely. I liked it better than Captain Marvel. I liked it better than. Um, I can't have an opinion on that one. Yeah, you, you I fell asleep for Captain Marvel. Uh, so yeah, there's there's a ton of these that I would put this this film above, and it's I think it's totally getting unfairly yeah, it's not unfairly fair. torn it, apart. It stinks. That's gonna bomb. Like it's gonna 20, bomb. There were twenty three. There were three other people in our theater. theater. It's going to bomb, and, and it stinks out. <laughs> because it, it had such like a like a a wall of hatred against yeah. it. I don't understand it. Uh, let's see. We should have a way more updated and better classes versus Dark Knight fight. Yeah, that would be way cool. 
Um, I want that proton pack so bad. <laughs> the one behind me is made by Carnivorous Creations. Mike Nelson, he's an awesome dude. Um, I heard the Magneto origin story was going into the sequel for X-Men Origins Wolverine. It was. When that flopped, they broke up the script and put in other movies. Hence the great character art. I, I, that's totally true. Um, you got the ghost. Oh, you got the Mexico Ghostbusters. I had the set, and I, I, I moved on. I passed it on to another person because I have so many Ghostbusters sets. But it did look awesome. It looked way better in person than I expected. Um, so then, uh, what's next? We did. We did Deadpool. Deadpool. Days of, did we do Days of Future? We did Days of Future Past. Yeah. Okay. Deadpool. Uh, the Quicksilver scene. I just want to say that real quick. Oh, oh the Quicksilver so scene in Days of Future Past is so much fun. Jesus. It's. It, it makes it, what would you say? It's amazing. Yeah. It's, it's so awesome. It takes me back to that Nightcrawler scene of X-Men 2. Yeah. Where that was really going? awesome. Yeah. Um, but the Quicksilver scene is, is that to the next level. Mm -hmm. And back to the Quicksilver comparisons between it and Age of Ultron, he's handled so much yeah, better in the X-Men films. Character. I love like watching character. Quicksilver yeah. in the X-Men movies. Um, and when they first showed the pictures of him and Alpha, I was like, oh, he looks awful. That's going to be terrible. And I looked at the pictures of the Quicksilver from Age of Ultron, I was like, oh, that's Quicksilver. And then I watched the movies, I was like, this Quicksilver's boring and terrible. Yeah. And then the one in the X-Men movies, like, this guy's funny and He's awesome. He's a blast to watch. He's yeah. so much fun to watch. Uh, let's see, it really bugs me that people listen to other people's opinions about movies more than their own, and that stops them from seeing a movie they could really like. Totally agree. I see so many people online blasting the movie that have not seen it yet. They're like, it looks awful. That's terrible. I'm so glad it's over. Did you see it? What's your reason that you think it's awful? Because you didn't like X-Men Apocalypse? Okay, fine. Did you like Days of Future Past? Did you like First Class? Because you're judging it based on one movie you didn't like. Um, that means you, after Iron Man 2, you shouldn't have watched any more Iron Man movies. Because you should have Iron Man 2 is terrible. I don't want to see Iron Man ever again. Yeah. Um, but more instead, more you good. keep giving Iron Man chances. Iron Man had one good movie out of three. And one mediocre one. Like Two Iron is Man mediocre. Two is okay. yeah. Three is awful. Yeah, it's bad. So is Avengers 2. It's not good. Avengers 2 no, is not good. No. So you shouldn't have stopped after Avengers 2. You shouldn't have watched any more Avengers if you didn't like Avengers 2. Because that's what you're doing with the Fox X-Men films. You're going, I don't like X-Men Apocalypse, so I don't like any of them. I don't see any anymore. Okay, whatever. X-Men Apocalypse is not that bad. It's really it's not. It's really not. It's not nowhere that near as bad as people say. You may not enjoy Apocalypse, but the rest of the movie is not that bad. Yeah, I don't enjoy Sorry. Apocalypse, but everything else It's not that bad. Good. Um... A quick server scene in the box yeah, is pretty great. great. It is great. Awesome too. I think he's. Uh, I was laughing and I thought it was funny and I, I love the way they did it. It's well handled. It is. Um, I think it's the best handle of anything that's done like Fast Superheroes. Yeah, it's Age really cool. Apocalypse, Flash and Justice League, Flash and the TV show. Yeah, it's the best. Out of it's the best things. high speed thing. Yeah. It's really cool looking. Um, and, and the movie overall is just fun to watch. I love the bits. With, uh, Apocalypse is fun to watch. I love the um, I love the Magneto continuing his arc where he's got his family now. And yeah, that's, that I really like that stuff. That was I didn't really cool. The movie. Yeah. Just, yeah. There's some stuff like that in the comic and in the Magneto yeah. stuff, um, and, you, and that's yeah. And you feel for yeah, him, you, like you feel so you feel really bad. bad. Him. Um, and so then, and when he comes into the workers afterwards, and yeah. he's just like, now your family is gonna know what it's like to to lose somebody they love, and it's like I was like, man, this is killer. This is great. Uh, okay, let's see. Um, I feel like if they put the X-Men in the MCU, they should explain their lack of activity in the past during the MCU because Professor X, wherever didn't want these mutant students involved in any heroism. That makes sense. They may just start with mutants all over. Like, it may be something they totally introduced. I can't see that mutants, mutants would have existed up to this point in the MCU and then not have addressed it. Uh, I feel like Dark Phoenix can't be done justice in one film. I agree with you. Yeah. Far too powerful of a character considering the comic storyline. Uh, but I do want to see the movie regardless. I wish it was more than one movie, but I think they knew the writing was on the wall. And they wanted to get this last bit out. Um, DC or Marvel? They um, for me a lot. I really I, like the DC characters yeah, a lot. They have my favorite characters, but Marvel has more. I think DC has some better storylines than Marvel too. With like all they the have Batman more classic yeah. storylines. Um, I don't know. Marvel's got some great characters too. Um, it's tough. Yeah, I, it's really tough. I like both. Like I don't have a definitive yeah, it's, favorite. it's all hard. The time. It's hard to say. Yeah. Um, my school teacher radar sense that the average GPA on this stream is 4.12. <laughs> that's, hey, that's pretty good. That's a pretty good GPA. Um, I rewatched Batman Returns last Sunday. That's awesome. Great one to watch. There's a party that hopes MCU version of the X-Men won't be that great so people appreciate the Fox and X-Men a little more. I agree. I do too. People automatically assume MCU can do it better, but Fox did it great. Thank you so much, Oliver. That is really the point that we're trying to come through with here. Like, the MCU is not the be-all, end-all. Like... Don't think that they haven't had missteps, too. That they may not handle a character as well as you hope they handled this character. Or they did this as well, or did this as well. 
I just think that there should be some more appreciation for what the Fox X-Men films have done, and people should be giving Dark Phoenix more of a chance than they are. Um, let's see, what did you think of Batman Returns out of Danny DeVito Penguin? I love, I love Batman, Batman Returns. Returns. Yeah. Danny DeVito right, Penguin right. is killer. Michelle Pfeiffer's the best Catwoman ever. I watched it in theaters for months. So That's true. Awesome. That's very true. Um, so then we did... Uh, we did Logan is next. Uh, Logan's Logan is great. Okay, I said Days of Future Past my favorite, the best one, but I think Logan's my... I think Logan is actually my favorite one. And it might just be because it means something to me because it's the first rated R movie I saw in theaters. So. Yeah. I really, that really shouldn't have too much meaning to you. It's, it's not already. Well, no, it's the first one. It was the first one I saw in theaters. Um, so. That's true. Yeah. Uh, the um. The uh. Well, the thing about Logan is it's more like a, just a character it's, piece. Yeah, though, it's not, not really an X-Men, X-Men movie. movie. You know, it's 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 it by itself and not a team X-Men film. I, I think Logan has such a different feel to it than all the other movies do. Yeah. I um, think it's made like completely differently. Like, oh, I don't for sure. See it in, yeah, I don't see it in the same... You know, it's in the same universe, and it's a great way to, to say, okay, we're going to give these characters an ending. I don't think that the MCU is going to do that, where they're going to do a movie where it's like, we're going to give you this character's full-on ending. Yeah, you could say in Endgame you got some of that, but again... It's all they, lumped together. Yeah, it's all lumped together in this like giant team movie, um, and not really giving definitive ending to these characters, to like, here's the send-off. Um, let's see, I don't want the MCU X-Men... Wait, hang on. Still planning on seeing Eric finish, but they cast someone else for Jean Grey. Uh, I'm totally way behind. I love it like I do all Batman films. Was Endgame a big factor to Dark Phoenix bombing? I think that the backlash against the Fox X-Men films and the Disney buyout of Fox and people thinking what what Marvel's going to do makes them automatically just not care about this movie. They're blasting this movie and not caring about this movie because they know the Marvel X-Men films are on the horizon now. I wish they would have announced the Fox deal until after this movie came yeah, out. Yeah, it hurt it. Yeah. I think it definitely hurt it. I think the Marvel purchase of Fox and the idea that Marvel is going to reboot the whole thing anyway hurt it more than Endgame actually did. And then New Mutants keeps getting pushed back. And that's... Yeah. We'll see if... I still plan on seeing Dark Phoenix, but I wish they cast someone else for Jean Grey. I keep seeing Game of Thrones. I could see that. Um, I haven't watched Game of Thrones in a couple seasons, though, so now I think of her more as Jean Grey than I do I as Sansa Stark. I didn't like her in Apocalypse, but I really liked her in Dark Phoenix. I thought she was really good in Dark Phoenix. Um, just got home from work. Hopefully, not too late. You're not, Dinkman. Uh, Deadpool was the first radar film he saw in theaters, too. Wow, that's crazy. I was so happy they decided to approach Logan in a very sophisticated way and go the character driven, human aspect over the spectacle action packed movie. Uh, uh, it, did, uh, it did a long overdue justice. Yeah, totally agree, Yaller. Um, even Batman and Robin. I enjoy Batman and Robin's camp. I, I laugh at Batman and Robin. It's better than Batman funny. Forever. It's more watchable than Batman Forever, for sure. I can watch Batman and Robin and laugh at it. We quote Arnold lines. Yeah, it's, constantly. It's, yeah. it's the time. most quotable Arnold movie there is. Uh, so then we move on to what's next? Um, Deadpool Logan, two, Deadpool two. It. We count Deadpool two and the Deadpool. Once one upon a Deadpool is the same thing. Movie. You guys yeah. saw Once Upon a Deadpool. It's pretty much the same movie. I don't think it's as good as Deadpool one. But I can't really. I think really you said you liked it better. That. And now the more I look back at it, the more I'm like, okay, Deadpool one's probably a little bit more, more rewatchable because I really don't like the kid in Deadpool yeah. two. Yeah. But really yeah, don't like the kid. Cable is awesome. Cable oh. is so cool, but the kid in Deadpool 2 is really annoying. Um, we all have different tastes. Uh, come on, Batman and Robin is fun to watch. Uh, okay, so then we go to X-Men Apocalypse, right? No, that was before Logan. Was it? Yeah. We, we talked yeah. about, X-Men, we talked about X-Men, Apocalypse? X-Men Apocalypse a little yeah, bit. Yeah, we just did. Yeah. Oh. We lumped in when we were ta- starting to talk about Quicksilver scenes, we started talking about... Okay, all right. I think. Yeah, because yeah, you said even if you don't like Apocalypse, it's still a pretty good movie. Yeah, I can't remember if you were saying it in order if you just talking about it. Yeah. yeah, it doesn't matter. Uh, uh, well, you just watched X-Men Apocalypse. You both yeah. just watched it for the first time I last night. Like five different five yeah. movies. It gets blasted. Movie. People say it's like the worst film ever. It's not. It's really not. It's really not. Um, you may not like uh, Apocalypse in the movie, but there's a lot in the movie to like. Um, and then now we're on Dark Phoenix. And so we saw Dark Phoenix today. Uh your fist uh let's see i have ever read old man logan so if you guys have a case of me it's a faithful it's not a faithful adaptation of old man no. logan the only thing that correlates is that he's an old man and he's, and he's logan. logan uh it really doesn't have much to do with the old man logan comics at all um it's its own thing that's great it ties more in with x23 and and dark wolverine and stuff like that than it does anything that's in actual old man, old man logan in my opinion uh, okay, so Dark Phoenix. Now, there's problems with Dark Phoenix. Yeah, there is, but it's. I'm not saying it's perfect. 
It's yeah. so much better than people are saying. Though. It's so much better than people like, are doing. Credit it was right now. an enjoyable time at the theater. Yeah, we kept on turning each other like. That this was is really cool. Pretty yeah. good. Yeah. You know, like this is pretty fun to watch. Like this is not. We left them. Okay, we saw in game. We left the theater from in game, and we had a lot of like. Uh, I like this, but I wish they'd have done this different. Yeah, like the whole this. ride home from Endgame was saying stuff like, yeah, that was cool. I hated what they did with this character. I hated what they did with that character. Yeah. This I, film was an even paced, like, just kind of good time watch that I don't have any, like, questioning about. Yeah, I felt more satisfied when I left this than I did in Endgame. Yeah. I think I would have liked it more if I reclined my seat, but... <laughs> Yeah, we ran a theater with reclining seats, and for some reason, Keaton didn't realize it was reclining seats. Yeah, he I forgot it was reclining uh, seats. Walt Sims is watching. What's up, dude? Hey. Uh, so, we reclined. We were on each side of Keaton. Yeah. It was like, I was I was where Keaton is. Um, Keaton is where you are. Yeah, right and here. so me and Blaze were both reclined in these seats. And, that, and he was the just, credits, he was like, these seats reclined. He was like, these seats reclined. They reclined reclined for like the credits. <laughs> for 30 seconds of the credits. He was like, that's all good. <laughs> so, like, the whole time, he was in these these chairs just sitting out where he couldn't recline the whole time. Uh, but, okay, so, it's, it's a good continuation of the films. Mm -hmm. Talking about the outfits real quick, before I forget, because somebody talked about the outfits. I think that each film has kind of progressed the outfits and tried to tie in stuff from the comics each time, but also tying into the time period it's supposed to be set in. Uh, so, like, at the end of Apocalypse... It seems like it's actually always a decade behind. Uh, it does. It does. Or it feels like maybe a decade ahead, because, like, the 90s suits they have on in this one is actually the suits from the new yeah. X-Men comic, which is 2000. Um, and then the 80s it's suits... the 90s suits. The 80s suits have the 90s suits. Yeah, it's a little off, but they did progress the outfits throughout each movie to, to show that the characters are aging. So, like, the first-class suits are very close to the original X-Men suits. Um... Days of Future Past, you had the future outfits that were kind of a spinoff of the the, two, the Brian Singer films, but also kind of trying to incorporate some of the stuff of their comic elements into the suits. Mm -hmm. um, I think these suits in this new movie are very much the new X-Men suits, and they're trying to do the team thing. They even talk about that in the movie, how they're, they're wearing team suits where they all match because they're becoming a team that the public knows yeah. as the X-Men team. And so all the suits are supposed to coordinate together. I um, like the way they look, though. I really like yeah, I like, I like the suits a lot. Let's see, I picked up Batman vs. TNT on Blu-ray Tuesday, even though I already saw it. I can't stop watching it. Help me. I haven't seen it yet. We need to pick up the Blu-ray, and we need to watch that. All the 90s era Marvel Legends X-Men that are coming out look really cool, but I still have most of my childhood toy with X-Men figures. I'm torn. I can collect one or the other, but not both. Why can't you collect both? Collect both of those, dude. The, the old toy with X-Men figures are not expensive. Get them both. End of Apocalypse was pure fan service. I could expect their assistant to change them because though they are cool, they aren't the most practical. I totally agree. But I like the Cyclops. I really like seeing I, I them at the end, though, and I wish I'd have seen more I of those suits. I have seen at least one action sequence with those suits. Yeah, they weren't, but I agree. They aren't practical, and they don't look like a team. They look like a bunch of people yeah. put together. And the idea of this movie is that they're a team, and the public sees them as a team, and they identify them as the X-Men, and so these suits matching each other makes sense um it, it makes sense for them to all be wearing these these x suits and i do i wouldn't want them to go back to the first class suits so when you, you think about x-men suits that match each other the options then become the jim lee suits which are a derivative of not the jim lee like individual costumes but like what banshee was wearing and forge was wearing and stuff like that which are very derivative of the very first x-men suits so that doesn't make sense so then you look at new X-Men, and that's the first time in a while that all the suits coordinated. So that's the suits they chose for this movie. So in some ways, it makes sense. Um, okay, so we're caught up. So the suits, I like. Uh, I like the casting in the movie. It, yeah. you, you still got the great guys like Fassbender and McAvoy coming through. Um, some people are complaining about the Cyclops guy, and I think he's... Yeah, yeah. yeah I don't I think he's any problem with him. I didn't have any no, problem with him at all. He's Cyclops from the comics. He's in love with Gene... But he still respects Professor X and wants to be the good student and follow him and be with the team. But his love for Gene is kind of pulling him in two directions. Uh, it's the first time I really bought the Gene Cyclops romance, too. Like, these two could be a couple. And they, they really were kind of in love with each other. Um, I never really got that much of that vibe from James Marsden and Fancy Jansen. I didn't really feel no. the love there. I felt her love with Wolverine. I like this guy better than... James Marsden? Yeah. Um, this guy was in Ready Player One too. He was the main character. In the I movie. thought he was really good. I thought he was really good as Cyclops. I liked I liked um, Sophie Turner as Jean Grey too. I liked her in this one. Yeah, she's much better in this one. 
Um, I liked the uh, Fassbender's always great. Yep. Um, I, I'm not a huge fan of Jennifer Lawrence's mystique as the movies go on. I wasn't as much a fan of her in this one. Tired of it. Like, you can tell that she doesn't really want to be there anymore. The lack of blue in the makeup, where she's not really wearing the full mystique makeup anymore. Um, you could feel that. That's probably one of my one things in the movie where I was like, ah, she's not feeling this. You can kind of tell it. You can kind of tell she's not feeling it anymore. Um, Whoever plays um, uh, Nightcrawler, I think he did pretty he's good. He's fun, yeah. yeah. Nicholas Holt as Beast, I thought he was great. Yeah, he's great. And I really liked his character in the movie. Like, yeah, he had he lots to do really this time this around. Um, I found my dad's old Voltron figure after all those years. I still worked. He was so happy. That's awesome, dude. Batman Returns or Ghostbusters? Oh, that is rough, man. Yeah, yeah, Ghostbusters. Uh, that's a tough call, dude. I, would not, I guess I'm I gotta not, go Ghostbusters. I'm not gonna go Ghostbusters. I, don't. I guess I gotta go Ghostbusters. If it was between Batman and '89 and Ghostbusters. Though, I'd have to take Batman '89. Um, yeah, who's your top bad. pick for a new Professor X? I can't I have even. No idea. I can't no. even think about that, Walt. That's that's too hard to do. I mean, you've got Patrick Stewart, which is already perfect, and James McAvoy that came into his own on it. So it's at that point, man. I have no idea. Um, I would say Sir Ben Kingsley would have been the next pick, but he already played Mandarin, or the crappy version of Mandarin Iron Man 3, so there's, there's no picking him. Um, I can't think of anyone else that can do it, right? I think Walt shaved his head recently. Walt, you can do it. Yeah, yeah, Walt, you're the, <laughs> you're the new <laughs> Professor X, dude. Uh, okay, so, um, yeah, so the movie is getting blasted, it's getting torn apart, nobody's going to see it, and it's a shame. Um, it's getting kind of the same treatment that Venom did. Mm-hmm. Except Venom actually made money. Except like, Venom people, actually made money, because people that. saw it. So now you had the critics against Venom, but you also had the fans against... The fans weren't against Venom. Yeah. And this time around, I think you've got the critics against X-Men, Dark Phoenix, and then you've also got the fans, the MCU fans, that are now against it because they think that the MCU mm-hmm. is going to make this better X-Men movie. Mm-hmm. There's one action sequence in the movie, like, towards yes. the end, mm-hmm. where it's, like, mutants everywhere in the streets... That whole sequence? Yeah, that scene was great. That scene was awesome. That scene was so cool. That was I really fun to watch. the first sequence in the movie, too, is I'm not going to say anything about it. Well, that and that's in the trailer, where they're going to the, the spaceship. Yeah. That, the, that that stuff's in the trailer, where they have to do a space rescue. And that's from the comics. Yeah, it is. That yeah. The, the, the Phoenix comes from space, and they're on a rescue mission. Um, Brian Cranston may work with Professor X. Hey, that's pretty good. I can only focus on one because I have a finite amount of space. Okay. I'm trying to save money for other mentors' lines to try to finish off the Kinder Superpowers and Indiana Jones. Mm. Well, I would say, then... That you put the Toy Biz X Men away, but don't get rid of them, like the original ones, and you buy the Marvel Legends as they come out. Because the Toy Biz X Men stuff isn't really moving up in price, like the 90s are, stuff, but Legends real. are. Like every wave, it seems like a figure disappears, and then it becomes like a $20 become, a figure, becomes a $30 figure, becomes a $40 figure, $50, $60. So I would collect those as they come out um, until you get all the characters you want as Marvel Legends, and then go back and get the Toy Biz stuff later on. I got my, my very first paycheck on Friday. I was so happy. That's awesome, Jerry. Where are you working at? Um, getting paid is awesome. Yeah. yeah. Getting you can paid, get toys. You can get toys, whatever you want, with your own money. Mm-hmm. And it feels and I work, so good. Yeah. Blaze has <laughs> <laughs> well, spent all his money on toys. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, so, yeah, this movie, I, I, I can't think of a scene or a thing where I look back in the movie and went, I wish that had been done differently. We left the end game going that. Like, yeah. Yeah. I wish this was different. Home, I wish that was different. Home. I wish this was different. I liked this, but I wish this was different. I just left the movie going, that was very satisfying. Yeah, it was. It felt like it, it was a good ending to the franchise, but at the same time, going, like Chick-fil-A is an awesome place to work. Uh, but yeah. there could have been a future. Mm-hmm. Like, they left it open-ended, whereas on Endgame, I felt that there was a closure to the whole thing, and I felt like the MCU was kind of closed... The door awesome. on all that. Me, like, it, yeah, yeah, like okay, close the door on all these characters. I feel like it's now over, and it's a new thing that's gonna be taking over. And I'm mm-hmm. not sure as I'm interested, but I felt like this was like, okay, I could have bought, I, I could have watched more of these. There's a future to these, and I feel like I could keep going with this. But at the same time, it's like if I didn't get more, I feel satisfied. I feel yeah. like it's that was a good end, but if you needed to do more, you could. And they're not going to do more. It's, no, it's over. It's a yeah, bummer. I really left bummed when we saw how few people were in that theater. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that mm-hmm. was a bummer. It was really a big bummer, because if I'd have left and it stunk, I'd have been like, okay, well, it's not going to make any money, and there's nobody here to see it, and that's okay. And I got some good X-Men movies. This is another one that's not so good. But this one I left, and I was like, man, it's really fun. And yeah. There's some other people on my my feed, thankfully on my Facebook feed that I'm reading from, 
And they're all going, you know what, I'm going to give it a chance anyway. Like, Sensing Nerd was like, I'm going to go see it. And he saw it and he enjoyed it. And a lot of people on his post... Go ahead. I really liked it. Like, I don't get the level of hate. I get if you have a little bit of dislike for it. I didn't even dislike it. I liked it, but... I didn't dislike it either. Their criticisms are just because it's not the MCU. Yeah, That's exactly. No, nothing is warranted on their criticism. No, no, my buddy Scott Tipton, I, I like Scott a lot. I think Scott's a cool guy. We worked on the Star Trek Vault book together. Um, he posted on my thread, and, and I don't think he'll care if I say this or not. He came through and he said, um, I just can't get interested in a Dark Phoenix movie that doesn't have Hellfire Club or Wolverine or... Um, I can't remember what the other thing he said was. And I came back to him and I said, okay, that's fair, but just to just to put the other side of this, I enjoyed Infinity War still, despite no Silver Surfer no, no. and no Adam Warlock. And those are two main characters to the Infinity Gauntlet that aren't there in the movie. Mm -hmm. um, so just because you don't get the exact characters and things you got from the comics doesn't mean it can't still work as a movie. I just want to put this out there. The X-Men animated series... Dark Phoenix is great. Oh, that's the yeah. best. I mean, but they had a... a yeah, they had an arc. They had an arc that they could like, do. Yeah. They could do, like, an entire season of a show to build it up. And that's what you need to do with the Dark Phoenix yeah. saga. I'm just saying as a cinematic version of the Dark Phoenix saga, this worked for me. Um, but they were going to do Adam Warlock. They are yeah, going yeah, to. Yeah, they are going to. But he needed to be there for yeah. the Infinity Gauntlet. Okay. I thought they were going to do that. They didn't, though. Yeah. Well, I mean, they, they have him coming at some point, I'm guessing, but he's not ready for that. I'm already buying Marvel Legends Thor from Walgreens, and I gotta get my dad a Father's Day present. Um, just make him a card. <laughs> Dad's like when you make cards. Uh, I'm just starting with, or give him the Thor, and then he goes, I don't really need this. I'm like, well, okay, I'll keep it. Um, I'm just starting my summer job at Canadian Tire for the sole purpose of being able to pick up the new Marvel Legends and hopefully buy my first Hot Toys. Motivation to work on stuff I really want. What are you? Ha what Hot Toy are you going after? That's what. What is going to be your first Hot Toy? Um, what did you have for dinner? We haven't eaten dinner yet. Yeah, we ate yeah, ice cream. Yeah, the, yeah, we ate ice cream at like 6 o'clock. We're like Justin Hammer and we ate our dessert first. He says that in the movie. Oh, I yeah, ate my did. dessert first. <laughs> Justin Hammer is great in yeah, Iron Man 2. Yeah, like, yeah, <laughs> that's the best thing about Iron yeah. Man 2 is Justin Hammer. I ate my dessert first. Got a bit of a sweet tooth. So do you for Tony Stark. Uh, okay. I think we're going to have chicken nuggets for dinner. I don't know. Um, okay. So is that... What, oh, do you have anything else you want to say about Dark Phoenix? I don't have you have anything you want to say about Dark Phoenix? Um, no, yeah, I think that's it for Dark Phoenix. I didn't even, it, like Scott said, he missed Wolverine. I didn't even think about Wolverine while I was watching the movie. No, no I, I didn't either. either. I didn't no, think no. about it. I didn't think about him being in it. I was like, okay, as we finished the movie, I was like, okay, well, that's a Wolverine, and that's the first X Men movie with no Wolverine yeah. whatsoever, and I didn't miss him really. No. I don't, I would have liked it less if they did because Logan was the end of that character. It was. Part. I don't need it to was. that. Yeah, and I, at that point, they've set up this timeline in the movie. Okay, so let's talk about the timeline for the movies a little bit, because that one guy was saying, I'm confused about the timelines. Um, the timeline for the movie would be, he would kind of be off on his own, doing his own thing and not having a memory really yet. Um, I think if people would have said if a character not established in the movies like Adam Warlock swooped down and took away the alignment from the Avengers that we've known for decades, I completely agree with you. I'm just saying that to say that these characters that I like in this comic story aren't in this movie, so I'm not interested in this movie, then you shouldn't be as interested in Infinity War because those characters aren't there. Um, so I, I, I'm not I'm not dogging. Scott's an awesome dude, and I, I think he would come back and, and we'd talk about this back and forth. I'm just saying if that's your reasoning beside for not seeing the movie, then you may be missing out on something because they're making things work without the characters that they've established. Um, because they're not ready for those movies yet. Uh, Hot Toys Cap from Infinity War is my first Hot Toys. That's a great choice. He looks awesome. Um, I'm debating between 89 Batman with a custom cape. I'm sure you when I was really young and stuck with me for years. Or Mech Suit Batman from Batman vs. Superman. I'm sorry, but I love that movie. Okay. That Batman's going to be hard to get. The 89 one is... The 89 Batman is expensive up. now. Hot Toys Batman 89 is like a $400, $500 figure. Uh, Mech Suit Batman is too, isn't he? He's, uh, he's up there too. A Tony May cape is kind of tough to come by too. I don't know if Tony's still doing those for Hot Toys 89 Batman. And you need that cape. If you're going to get the Hot Toys Batman, you have to have a custom cape. So I would make sure that you can get one of those capes before you buy the Hot Toys 89 Batman. Um, because... Not. It's not that great. If not, then go after the Mech Suit Batman and try to get the Mezco 89 Batman because that looks really cool. Yeah, Mezco 89 Batman looks really cool. Uh, the Hot Toys um, Batman from Batman vs. Superman, that Mech Suit Batman is awesome. 
He is awesome. Yeah, we opened up. Yeah, one yeah we opened one at the the, yeah. the shop. That's, and I like that I like Batman suit. suit. I think the I Batman love, suit yeah, is awesome. Really it's really Dark Knight cool. Returns Batman suit. I just don't like the movie. Actually. I just don't like the movie. Yeah. Um. Okay. Hot Toys I inspired from Infinity War is my as my first. I you know I've heard some mixed reviews on that Infinity War Sp Iron Spider actually. I think the suit doesn't. It's like material, and it feels like it's more metallic in the movie, and it's like a sort of vinyl suit on the figure. So there's been I've seen some mixed reviews on that one, uh, just coming from where I've seen the reviews myself. I've never seen one of those in person. Um, I would lean more towards that armored Batman. I've seen that in person and it's awesome. Or that just pre-ordering a Hot Toys cap from Infinity War. Uh, let's see. We better to get the returns Batman then because the stock cape is a lot better. So no need for customers. It better just try for an '89 one. It all depends on your suit suit preference, dude. I mean, they're two totally different suits. So. Did they do Batman Returns or was that Sideshow that did Batman Returns? No, Hot Toys did. That's okay, what you're yeah. saying. Oh, okay. I'm just saying, and he's trying to decide between Batman Returns or 89 because the cape is better on Batman Returns. The Hot Toys Batman Returns. Mm -hmm. um, it's really a preference of which suit you like. It's because you don't want to put that money into that thing and go, well, I like this, but I always like the other suit better, so it, I'm just getting this one because the cape's better. I wouldn't do that. It would be, if you can only get one, get the one you prefer and just reach out to Tony first or search online to see if somebody has a used cape that they may unload. Um, a lot of times, check the Sideshow Collectors Freaks board, too, like sideshowcollectors.com, um, their commerce section. A lot of times, people will be selling Hot Toys, and like the 89 Batmans that go up, a lot of times, they have a Tony cape with them already. I want the NECA GameStop Turtles. They're supposed to be coming back again. I like want those. Do another run of those. I know you want them now. That's right, I had my hands on a set, and you were like, I don't really want those. And now it's now you do want them, so I gotta yeah, try. Yeah, yeah I've, I've had a couple sets come through my hands. Oh, I didn't know that. You didn't know that, but you said you want to. Did I say that? You yeah, did say that. You did. You did say that. I don't that. remember that. You did. And so now I gotta try and. I want to get. Set. I don't want to get a hot toy as my first one. I want to get the um, eleven, the knockoff company. I think. Oh the, yeah, the, the, the Logan. Logan yeah, from that. Logan. Yeah, that's a pretty sweet one. Uh, do you guys should get the Office Pop vinyls when they drop, or just a couple? Um, Jack, it all depends on what kind of money you got. But The Office is a favorite show, so if you have the money... If you have the money, you should get them all. Pops are cheap. They're only like 10 bucks a piece. You should get them all. Uh, okay. So, go see Dark Phoenix. Let, give it a chance. Don't judge it based on what uh, people say, telling you not to go see it, what the critics are saying, or people that are super excited about the MCU taking it over. Just go and see the movie and judge it for <laughs> yourself. I got the uh, money, oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. When I go to Milwaukee Comic Con this year, I'm going to pick up those Mega Turtles. That's awesome. Uh, the older I get, the more attractive I am for vintage. I sold most of my modern Hasbro Star Wars toys, including the 6-inch Black Imperials, and focusing on being a vintage kind of line. The nice thing about collecting vintage is you know how much you've got to get. Yeah. You it's, can get a confined line. Like yeah. That. Whereas when you're collecting a, a new line or current line, you never know when it's going to end. You could be collecting this for the next 15 years. And you could keep getting reuses of characters. That are yeah. better than your previous ones. Like when I, in 1995, when I started collecting the Star Wars modern line, and I was buying it, it just never ended. It just kept it's going, and wrong. it's still going. Like I can't imagine that being in that line and still being with it now. Um, so yeah, that's the nice thing about vintage. Is like you've got this set amount, you can knock them down bit by bit and be done, and you know that there's a, a goal in sight. So that is the nice thing about collecting vintage over and over. But I would say with Toy Biz X Men though, if you have to choose between the two, I would still say. If you want those Marvel Legends, that you should stick with it and get the ones you want because they do move up in value. And if you're a year from now, then you go, ah, I wish I'd have bought those. You're going to spend a lot more money to get them. And I think you'll still be able to get the Toy Biz X-Men stuff kind of cheap. Uh, they'll probably release the GameStop Turtles when they release Shredder, Foot Soldier, and Splinter GameStop. Yeah, and I think probably. those are coming to GameStop. And they've already said that more GameStop Turtles are coming. Vintage Star Wars is awesome. And uh, Walt, yes, yeah, and Walt has got quite a vintage Star Wars collection. He's Yeah, he he's, got a he lot comes in the up, shop. Yeah. And he's been knocking them down in there. We're like his sixth and seventh favorite. Yeah, we're his sixth and seventh favorite person. Yeah. He's like oh, our eleventh favorite nice. customer. Yeah. Yeah. It all depends on how he's feeling that day, if he's our eleventh or tenth or ninth. Yeah. Even. Uh, okay. So, yeah, I, I can't say it enough that you should really judge Dark Phoenix on your own. Don't let people sway you ahead of time to not go see it. Six and seven, that's us. Uh, I'm six. You're six. I'm six. You're seven. I'll be seven. Uh, you just got knocked down to eight. Yeah. Yeah, let's don't don't, don't, be, don't be level jumping here. Uh, so don't let people sway you ahead of time to not go see it because oh, it's terrible. It's over. It's gonna be MCU now, and you don't even need to watch that. 
Just give it a shot. Give it a shot on your own. If you like going to the movies, give it a shot. Uh, after seeing how into Ghostbusters you guys are, I decided to watch it the first time in a while, and I really liked it. That's awesome. I want figures, and I have a few superhero Mezco figures, and I love them. Do you recommend the Mezco ones or the Diamond Select? I personally recommend the Diamond Selects, but that's as a big-time Ghostbusters guy that wants all of these characters, and I wanted to build a diorama, and I wanted the cartoon ones, and I wanted Ghostbusters 2. For me, Diamond Select is a more complete Ghostbusters line, where you can get lots of characters and lots of stuff. If you just want a core set of Ghostbusters, though, the Mescos are really nice, and you get them all in one package. You buy them all one time, you got it. Uh, this is my first time watching the show, and I love it. Best show on Sunday night. You men are awesome. Hey, thanks so much, Thank Walt. You. You're awesome, too, dude. Thanks for watching it, man. Uh, I, it's not the same as the Facebook Friday Live videos. Uh, it's more just to kind of hang out and talk about stuff type of deal. There's a Mezco figure I want. It's not a 112. I want the goon figures that they made. Yeah, I'm those not, were good. Yeah. Mezco did some great stuff back yeah. then. They did the Hellboys, and they did those, and they were both awesome lines. Uh, the goon figure is so cool. The goon figure is really they cool. Have, they have, like, a lot of them, too. They have him, Frankie, the priest. Those yeah, are really cool. Know. Those are really cool. Yeah, you don't know anything about those. You're I don't good. know anything about a lot of stuff. Yeah, yeah you're young. You'll get there. Give some time, buddy. You doing yet. Give some time, buddy. Uh, okay, so... Popeye? I didn't know whether you guys were talking about Popeye. Popeye? The Mezco Popeye? You I know seen Popeye. It? No, I haven't seen Popeye. You know Popeye? No, I, I mean, Popeye. Popeye. He's got an <laughs> infection <laughs> in here. He's got the pox in his eye. I know uh, Popeye. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Let's cover some, a couple of these comments here. I don't focus on the Spider-Man related Hasbro Legends, except for the movie based ones from Iron Man Jr. Far From Spider-Man. That's a great Thank name yeah. for that movie. <laughs> and it is totally Iron Man Jr. Far Talk From Spider-Man. Spider -Man. Yeah. They, they don't get what... People like about Spider Man. The whole point yep. is he's relatable. Yeah. Him trying to be Iron Man is not relatable yeah, in any when, way. When I read a Spider Man comic, I don't get there sit there and go, you know what? This was pretty good, except I wish he was just trying to be Iron Man he's the not, entire time. He's not Iron Man. I wish he was just trying to join the Avengers the entire time yeah. instead of the story I'm reading. Um, right. And I wish he was like irresponsible and didn't care about school and was more interested in just being an Avenger. Um, and I also wish that everybody knew who he was. Yeah, I wish everybody. I knew don't read any Spider-Man Spider comics that think that. I don't read them ever. I love Spider-Man. I love Spider-Man as a character, and I've never thought those things. I just like Spider-Man being Spider-Man, and I don't think they get that with these no. movies. I'm excited about Mysterio, but the rest of the stuff in the movie, I'm just like, oh, this is more of the same from Spider-Man: Homecoming. Yep. It's... Finding out about that he's Spider-Man there. Yeah, and here's Iron Man Jr. I want to be Iron Man. I want to be Iron Man. Who's? I want to be the next Iron Man. Come on, man. Nobody watches Spider-Man hoping he becomes Iron Man. They watch him being Spider-Man. All right. So I think that's everything for tonight. Um, if somebody else has any more questions popping up. Uh, we didn't do recent pickups. Oh, yeah. What did you get? I got Domino. You got Domino, yep. Yeah. Did you get anything this nope. week? You can get this week. Mm -hmm. I got the Magtent. Was Mag that, was that this week? Yeah, the Magtent. Yeah, this week. I got the Magtent, which was a uh, Magneto. Uh, that It's a Michael Fassbender Magneto from Days of Future Past. It's a third-party figure made by Toys Era. So I have Toys Era Colossus and I have Toys Era Cable. Wait, what's Toys um, Colossus called? He's called the Steel. <laughs> and the Cable's called the Mechanical. Uh, so they oh, call them these other silver. things. That, yeah, silver. but they're not um, in an effort to get around licensing. Uh, and he's awesome. He's so I got great. that. I got that one. Uh, so James, since you're a Batman fan, when Begins came, came out, did you always prefer you know, when you saw it Begins in theaters? Or did you go back to 89 after time? I've always preferred Batman 89. I've always preferred Batman 89 over to, to Batman Begins. Um, uh, let's see. I, I, did enjoy, I did like Batman Begins. I did like it. Um, I didn't like it as much as the, the Keaton films. And it's my favorite of the three Nolan movies. I think the Begins was the, the best of those three. Um, I missed Halloween 2016. I was a Ghostbuster that year. I got so much candy, but everyone said I looked like a potato that's sack. The, that's the year we were Ghostbusters. <laughs> that's the year we were Ghostbusters yeah. as well. <laughs> he said I looked like a potato sack. <laughs> What's going potato on in your sack. neighborhood, dude, where they think a Ghostbuster looks like a potato sack? Hey, straight Come sack. on, dude. And they say it's straight to him. You look yeah. like a potato sack. These people in your neighborhood got to get with it. Saw Batman Year One and loved it, which there's a second year. There is a comic version of the second there year. There is a year two Batman. It's not as good as Batman Year One. But it has the Reaper. Who it does cool. have the Reaper, who's cool. And it's got some Tom McFarlane on it. I suggest awesome. Batman Year One. Yeah, yeah, Batman Year One is awesome. Um, Batman Year One and Dark Knight Returns are both awesome animated movies. Uh, anything else, guys? You want to no, talk about? I don't have anything. Nope. 
Well, they're not. Did I have any of Pops? The Mag Tents. The Mag Tents, yeah. Oh, uh, I got a comic. What comic? It's, it's behind you on that top stack of comics. Where? It's on that comic box. Is it Major X? No, Major, Major X? X is coming in next okay. week. It's behind you on this top of the stack of comics. There's a comic in there. This is a big purchase. Yeah, in the box. No, on top of the on top of the box. On top of the box. Oh, there was like a thing. This. That's it. Yep. Oh, okay. This is a cool comic. Oh wow! Yeah, that is cool. I can't see it on here. That is a cool comic. Oh, that's awesome. Incredible Hulk 181. First appearance of Wolverine. I wanted these one of these for a while, and a, a friend of mine had one, and the price was right. That it's is... had the the coupon cut. Which is these Marvel value stamps inside there? That's my Grail comic. Um, yeah, this is one of my Grails. Appearance of Wolverine. And so now I have the first appearance of Wolverine. So that was my that was a major pickup for me this week. Um, would you disappear? Me? What are you looking at? They got Savage yeah. Avengers. That's cool. I was looking at the comics. Who got? Oh, okay. Uh, let's see. Bye, Jack. Uh, the neighbors thought my brother's dressed as Indian Jones uh, was an aviator and can't win them all. Hey, that's not bad though. Wait, they thought he was an aviator and said Indiana Jones? What's going on there? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, everyone thought it was something strange in the neighborhood. I got Savage Avengers number two. And while it was, while it was good, it was not as good as the first to me. I, I agree with that. Savage Avengers 2 was not as good. It didn't seem like much happened in it. It was good. The art was good. But it just didn't feel... It felt like like a half an issue. It felt like it was just kind of... As I finished the story, I'm like, that, that was all there was? I didn't enjoy it, though. Um, it's no major X. I'm not, okay. Major X is not the best comic either, but it isn't like a 90s X comic and I really enjoy it. Uh, thanks, Fingers. What's your favorite current running comic right now? Uh, Uncanny X Men's probably Uncanny my favorite. X-Men? Yeah. Yours? Right, the current? Yeah, yeah, like any current title. I, I can't say Ghostbusters because Ghostbusters jumps around. Yeah. It's not like a continuing series. I really enjoy Ghostbusters. I love reading it when it comes out. But as far as like a continuing monthly series, well, it's probably I'm going to cheat and say a comic that jumps around and is not constant. I'm going to say the current Goon mini series oh, okay. is my favorite. Well, then that's well, I'm going to cheat. That's I'm going to cheat. But I would say Ghostbusters. I don't really know. I was, you like Ghostbusters. You really enjoy reading that. Yeah, I don't have any like, the new ones. I do the paper. So you do the trades. Yeah, I do the trades. So what, okay, so you read Venom. You get that monthly. Yeah, I read Venom. But the um, You read... Uh, Spider-Man. You read some Spider-Mans. The, what's it called? The one of the game. Oh yeah, the, the PS4 game, City yeah, of War. Yes. Yeah, you read that? That's pretty good. Um, and then you read. I can't remember what else you get. That's current. No, I don't yeah. remember anything. I got you something this week where I was like, okay, that's what he gets this week. What did I get you this week? That's current. Yeah. What did I get you this week? Batman. Batman Ninja Turtles. Batman Turtles. Yeah, Batman Turtles three. Uh, oh, I keep mentioning the goon. I just want to say for anyone that doesn't know what that is, I highly su- suggest. The comic. Yeah, movie. you really like that, that comic a lot. Uh, was that the comic I got you? No, that was not the comic you got me. Uh, Bobby got me the first appearance of Cable um, for Father's Day. So that's on the wall over there. Uh, so it's really rare or It's over there. Yeah, well, I'm kind of knocking out first appearances yeah. of characters that I want to have. a lot of first appearances. I do have a lot of first appearances of characters. Um, you have Gambit. I have Gambit's cool. first appearance. I have Deadpool's first appearance. And then I have tons of Spider-Man first appearances because I have oh, you runs have of spider yeah. like, I don't have runs of X-Men care of X-Men, but I do like to have some first appearances here and there. And uh, I think our feed just froze. <laughs> yeah, ours did. Perfect timing. We just got another question though, so I don't think it's frozen for everyone else. All right, it may be froze for everyone else. Too. Yeah, perfect timing. Uh, so Granny Weaver and the other Ghostbusters joining the movie. I heard from the Google Snap official. Oh, that's cool. Uh, we talked about that earlier, but I don't know. I still don't know how official it's going to be. I don't know if this feed's working anymore. I, it might just be frozen. Perfectly frozen. Uh, it's perfectly frozen on there. Can you want to go around and see if the camera's still there? Yeah, JCC says yes. Yeah, oh, you have. It said twenty percent power on your phone, so it might have froze. So continue. It's froze. Is it froze? Oh wait, no. That's not good. Keaton's still moving. Oh yeah, you're moving. You were staying in the same thing. You weren't okay. blinking. Or doing okay, anything. now it's moving again. It's yeah, you weren't okay. blinking. Okay, so I'm frozen. It's all good now. So that must be what it is. The okay, camera's about to die. Fun. That's what's going on. Uh, so we better wrap this up pretty cool, pretty soon. Yeah. yeah. We're gonna be moving there. Uh, I recently Plus, snagged the nice one of Superman comics from 1982 to 1983, including Superman 386, which is a gorgeous cover by Gil King. That's awesome, dude. Uh, yeah, the Sigourney Weaver thing. We're still not 100 percent sure it's it's legit. Uh, thanks, Kyle. Hey, what's up, dude? I just got my first graded comic a few months ago. It spawns first appearance. That's awesome, yeah, that's dude. Cool, yeah. That's really cool. I don't do a lot of graded stuff. Um, so I like to be able to take out the issue and look at it still. Yeah. But graded stuff is cool looking to have on a wall. That is cool. 
All right. Um, this battery's about to die, so yeah. I don't want to like leave you guys like with us frozen again. Um, cool. so uh, I guess we'll wrap it up. Yeah. We'll see you guys again next weekend. Right. Same time ish Sunday at eight thirty. Uh, are you guys gonna get Superman Year One this month? Uh, who's doing that? Frank Miller is doing Frank it. Frank Miller's doing it. Yeah, and who's doing the art? It's the artist is really good. I know, like, yeah. I don't know. Frank's a little crazy. He's now. crazy now, but the artist is good. I'm pretty sure. So I wanna check it's it out crazy? just because of that. Yeah, Frank Miller's nuts. Hey, thanks, JCC. Uh, I got the Batman Ninja Turtles. Uh, he's got all the Batman Ninja Turtle comics. He thinks those are awesome. Um, yeah. Yeah, I can't remember who's doing the art on that. You know, I you know, I help at the comic shop in the Wednesday morning so I can get the books as they come in and I kind of flip through them. So I'll, I'll probably flip through Superman Year One out of curiosity, but I don't know if I'll buy it. Just because I like to think of Frank how he used to be. Yeah. And I not, don't really like to think of Frank So you what don't Frank like Batman All Star. Is that what you're saying? Mm, <laughs> no, I'm not a big fan of All Star Batman and Robin. What's that? Uh, a bad hey, that's comic. awesome. I'd love to hang out with you. Uh, great stream. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. See you next week. Or are you getting Wolverine? Also, you're getting Wolverine Exit Wounds. I, I'm not getting that. I've not been buying them. Wolverine Exit Wounds. Is that John Romita Jr. is good. Okay, John Romita Jr. I love John Romita yeah. Jr. So that's, that's actually kind of tempting. That's Wolverine bad. Exit Wounds, is that the... Oh, is that the one that's based on the podcast like the podcast I series? Think the podcast or is that Long Winter it. or something I'm, like that? I can't remember what it's called. No. I don't remember what Wolverine Exit Wounds is. What is Wolverine Exit Wounds? What is Wolverine Exit Wounds? So John Romita Jr. art is actually tempting. I'm going to check that out. Okay. okay, I'll pick up a copy and you can read mine if you want of Superman Year One. Okay. All right. Yeah. I'll, if you don't have anything else going that yeah. way, we'll grab that. Uh, off topic. Have you and the boys ever watched Big Trouble in Little China love, together? Oh, yes, we all love Big Trouble. We love Big Trouble in Little China. It's super underrated. Yeah, we love that movie. I, it like a week I don't think it's underrated. Thing. I think people. Will, it was back then. Yeah. I think people okay. love it now. It's a cult classic. Uh, okay. Lately. This guy feels like it's underrated though, but I, I feel like people that know it love it. Oh. Um, and it's it's back then, yeah, it did horribly, but it's got become a, a kind of a life on its own. I loved it as a kid. Even as a kid, I loved that movie. I used to take my Rhino from Mask and pretend that was his truck. And I would use my Mask figures as uh, as Jack Burton, and I'd use one as a uh, uh, Low Pan and all these different guys. They'd, I'd reenact that movie with my Mask figures. Uh, what was he gonna say? Um, I have all the Funko toys for that, the reaction ones. Oh. Yeah, yeah, those are. Did they make money in it? I don't think they no, did. No, they oh, didn't. Huh. I, I got, I lost it. I lost it. You talking about Wolverine? Oh, there was one last thing. There's this this thing I've been reading lately is that the guys that made the X Men cartoon in the '90s are pitching Disney on a continuation of the 90s X-Men cartoon. Which would be awesome. That would be awesome. It's never going to happen. It won't. Yeah. No. But it's never going to happen. Awesome. It will be awesome. Uh, it, it'll never happen in that it won't be a continuation of the 90s cartoon. It'll either be dumbed, dumbed down for like the younger audiences like they do with a lot of the Marvel cartoons now, or it won't be the same animation style, or it won't be the same voice actors. It, it, it definitely it, won't be the same voice actors. It won't be the same. Yeah. As as much as a dream as that would be, it's really just a dream. I would love it. It would be awesome, but it'll never happen right. Um, here for your exit scene. Okay, oh no, we're exiting. Oh, that's oh yeah, that's my one of my favorite things. Okay, we're gonna see you guys next week. Um, it's probably around Sunday at eight thirty as usual. Uh, just kind of kind of yeah. sneak out of here. I'm see you guys. I have the easiest thing. Bye. It's gonna just gonna sneak right on out of here. Yep. Um, <laughs> Just, yeah, I'm just gonna make sure we don't get just hang out over here. <laughs> Goodbye, everyone. Thanks for joining us. There's a oh, I know she's trying to be Superman and all this Batman work. You know she's crack like crap. You're right about that, Batman. Oh, okay. Just gonna, just gonna hit this button. Wait, uh, this it's this button.